Hello everyone and welcome back to Corndog Creates. Today we're going to be converting these three Hot Wheels cars into Gaslands or Mad Max style cars. The first thing I wanted to do was take the cars apart to make things a bit easier. To do this I used a rotary tool to drill out the rivets on the bottom of the cars. This went smoothly on the orange truck but when I attempted it on the yellow and blue cars the rivets were made of metal so I ended up having to drill around the rivets to loosen them. I also trimmed the metal pieces under the frame so that when I put them back together they wouldn't cause any issues. The next thing I wanted to do was use some sandpaper to scratch up the surface to give the glue something to adhere to. Once that was done we could move on to the fun part, customizing. I had this toy bulldozer that I wanted to use the front of so I used some clippers to cut it loose. I also bought a bunch of these toys from Dollar Tree that had a bunch of armor pieces and small guns that were perfect for this build, so I opened them up and picked through them to find some pieces that I wanted to try and incorporate onto these cars. Most of these little pieces needed some trimming before I put them on, but it was mostly little pegs that were originally intended to be plugged into hands of some toy soldiers. I also used the nail file to scratch up the surface of all the plastic pieces to make sure there weren't any smooth surfaces touching one another. I ended up adding some extra super glue when needed to make sure the pieces stuck properly. This turret that I wanted to use had this little piece on the bottom that I wasn't too fond of so I used my rotary tool to cut it off. But please don't follow my example and find a safer way to do something like this and don't have a motorized cutting tool this close to your fingers. I knew I wanted a turret on the top of this truck, but the original one that I chose was shaped weird and I couldn't get it to fit properly under the armor piece I wanted to have covering it, so I picked a smaller one and it fit perfectly. So I glued the barrel down to make sure it wouldn't spin anymore and glued it in place under the armor. I also found this piece that I thought would match to go on the back side of the truck, so I cut off the prongs on the bottom and glued it on. The next thing I wanted to add was a big metal plate as a kind of shield and ram combo to the front. I found this piece of cardstock from the inside of my cat food box, but most food boxes are made of it, so it's easy to find. I cut a small strip from the cardstock and cut a couple squares from that piece to glue to the front of the truck to hold the beam in place. And then I added the beam to the front to hold the metal plate. I wanted to add all of the metal plating at once, so I moved on to the next car. I knew I wanted to add the front of the bulldozer to this car, so I grabbed my baking soda and some gel super glue. Normally I wouldn't want to use baking soda and would rather use some kind of accelerator, but baking soda gives a rough texture when it's done drying, and I wanted that look to kind of simulate weld marks. The next thing was to clip the peg from this gun and sanding it down so that it fits the top of the car. I also wanted to add some spikes to the tires and I had these nunchucks in one of the packs so I decided to clip off the chain, cut off the ends and sand them down to use those as the spikes. For this last car I ended up doing the most modifications and I think I might have gone a bit overboard but this was my first time doing this so I'll chalk it up to a learning experience. I kind of imagine this car is an armored tank built for ramming as well as shooting so it ends up fitting that image pretty well. I wanted to use the turret gun that I originally planned to use for the truck so I found some pieces that look like a barrel and some air tanks or something. Then I trimmed them all down so they'd sit on the top and back of the car and glued them all down. The next thing that I added to the car were these pieces that look like metal beams that I thought would look good as armor on the side of the car. 
So I cut the pegs off of them and glued them so that they would cover up the wheels to double as extra armor for those as well. I also had these armor leg pieces that I wanted to use a part of, so I clipped off the part that I wanted and stored the rest away and used the curved plating to cover the back wheels to finalize the metal plating for this car. Next I brought back the cardstock and cut out a piece and cut it in half and cut some slits into one half that didn't go all the way through so that I could fold it into a triangle shape and glued it together. I also made a pointed tip for it and glued it on. Then I cut off the corners of the second piece and folded it in half to a point. Then I glued those pieces to the front of the car along with some of the pieces that I cut off to try and reuse some of the waste. I found these children's art packs at the Dollar Tree at Halloween time and it had some foam pieces of all shapes and sizes so I wanted to use these for the metal plating on all of the cars. Much thanks to Bill making things for this idea because it's really helpful and cheap. I cut a long strip of the foam from one of the larger pieces and cut a piece to fit the back window of the car. Then I took a mechanical pencil and used the tip to poke little divots into the foam. Not hard enough to go through the foam, but just enough to leave the impression of the pencil in the foam. And when I was done, this is what I had. A perfect piece of metal with rivets in it. I couldn't use super glue on this foam without risking melting it, so I used clear Gorilla Glue and placed it over the window. Then I repeated the process for the window on the other side and this was the result. Next I moved back over to the truck and cut another piece of foam to act as the shield in the front. After that I noticed that the shield I put over the turret had a hole in the back of it, so I wanted to cover it up and this googly eye was the perfect size. So I added some glue to the back and placed it over the hole. Fortunately, it's going to be painted over or else it would be pretty creepy seeing that thing wiggling around all the time. Try to simulate small tubing on this truck. I grabbed some 18 gauge wire and cut it to a length I liked and glued it in place. Next, I grabbed some needle nose pliers and used them to help me twist and turn the wire around to the shape I wanted before gluing it down and repeating the process on the other side. And we're left with this. After that, I grabbed a smaller 20 gauge wire and cut it into some small pieces so that I could glue them to the side of this box I built around the engine to try and replicate a makeshift cage. Again, I probably went a little overboard on this part, but it's an apocalyptic car with some crude metal work by basically roaming packs of barbarians, so you can't expect it to be perfect anyways. This process was done in the same way I added a lot of the armor. Super glue and baking soda for the texture. When it's finished, it looks pretty rough, but I'm not really looking for perfection here. I'm mostly experimenting with things and learning as I go by using techniques I've learned from other creators and figuring out what will and won't work. You guys just get to see how I learn in real time pretty much, so if something else works better for you, please do so. Customizing these cars was fun for me and that's what it should be for you. Putting pieces in different places to figure out how to make them more interesting to look at was like putting a puzzle together and finding the right piece for the right place is satisfying. No two cars will look the same so it's good to experiment because there's no right way to do it. Once I was done with that, I remembered that I wanted to add some spikes to the front of the blue car, so I grabbed a couple toothpicks, cut off the tips to different lengths, and glued them around the hood and bumper of the car. And then I added some of the 18 gauge wire to the front windows to protect the poor driver of this thing. And then I grabbed some of this plastic mesh that's made for knitting, and I cut a piece to fit the shape of the front windshield of the car to try and add some variety to the overall look. Next, I grabbed some tubing from a miniature spray bottle, and after cutting it to size, I glued it down to use as a fuel hose or something like that to go along with the turret in the front and the tank in the back. For this next part I wanted a straight piece of wire so I grabbed a paper clip and cut it to the size I needed and bent the end so that it would stand on the car. 
Then I took some 18 gauge wire and wrapped it around the paper clip to give the look of barbed wire and glued it to the back of the car. I'm not sure what this thing is, but I found it in a junk drawer and I liked the design of it. So I grabbed a piece of foam and rolled it over it, making sure to press pretty hard to imprint the design into the foam. It didn't end up showing in the final product, but it didn't hurt to try. Then I used that same tool to dig some lines into the foam to make it look somewhat corrugated and cut some strips of it to cover the driver's side window. I also cut larger pieces of foam and used them as big sheets of metal to cover the passenger window, the hood of the car, and the windshield area of the truck. And I added some small pieces of plastic mesh to the windows on the door of the truck as well. This next part I also learned from Bill making stuff and of course it worked great. I have hole punches of different sizes and I used my smallest one to punch holes in this piece of plastic that came off of something. I then poured those out into a container and used super glue to place them onto the foam pieces to look like rivets on the metal. Now I know I said earlier that super glue could melt the foam but with such a small amount I was willing to risk them possibly sinking into the foam a little. Luckily that didn't happen, but just be careful with foam and super glue. Also don't use clear plastic to make your rivets because they're almost impossible to see. Now before we move on to priming these things and painting them, I wanted to make sure I use regular clear glue to paint over the top of all of the foam pieces because I use spray paint primer and spray paint like super glue can melt the foam. So giving it a coat of glue will help protect it from the spray paint. After giving all of the body pieces a coat of black primer, I gave them a spray of a mix of burnt umber and scarlet with an airbrush to give me the beginning of the rusty look we're going to have under our paint job. I want to add a disclaimer here and say that when you're using an airbrush or rotary tool or a lot of super glue at one time, make sure to wear a mask of some sort to protect yourself from anything harmful that can make you sick. You don't want to pass out over Hot Wheels unless it's from how stunning they look when you're done. Next I grabbed the brush and used it to dab on another mixture of burnt umber and scarlet, but more brown than red this time, and made sure to place it in random spots around the car to add some darker tones to the rust. After letting that dry for a few minutes, I made a mixture of yellow oxide and orange to give a dirty orange look, watered it down a good bit, and blotted that around in a few key spots like wheel wells, bumpers, and weld marks, making sure to be as random as I can with it because I want a nice color gradient to show for later when we start the main car colors. After that first coat was on, I added another coat of the same color but with less water so that it was thicker and went back and added a few small spots to the same areas from before to add some highlights to those orangey areas. While those were off drying, I grabbed the engine piece off of the truck and masked everything but the engine and coated it with a silver paint. I also took the middle piece of the yellow car and sprayed it with a pavement gray color. Now we move on to the masking phase. I ended up using toothpaste here because I had plenty of it and it's water soluble so it works great for what I need it for, but you could use some form of masking fluid or liquid latex if you prefer that. All I did was add a small amount of toothpaste to my X-Acto knife and lightly spread it on the places where I wanted the rust to show through after I put on the top coat of paint. I mostly placed it around wheel wells and weld marks, but it could be put anywhere and could be more or less rusty and it would look fine either way. But for me, less was more on this part. Thanks to Zombie Meat Studio for that tip. Once I was done with the masking, I used my airbrush to paint the cars as close to their original colors as I could, except for the truck. I didn't want the truck to be orange and have orange looking rust underneath and have the tube blend in too much and look like a giant rust box, so I made it red instead.
Now I'll set those off to dry and grab the same brush from earlier and used it to dab on the same silver paint I used for the engine around the underside of the cars so that they were mostly covered but still showed some of the rust underneath. Once the cars were dry, I used a couple wet q-tips to wipe off the paint and toothpaste from the masked areas, making sure not to rub too much or too hard so not to rub off the paint down to the plastic underneath. Then I used a smaller paintbrush to paint the metal over the windows, gun barrels, metal plates, and the rims of the wheels with the same silver. Next I painted the metal beams on the car an army green color and the plates over the wheels a pavement gray to give it some color variety. Lastly I painted the rest of the metal parts the same pavement color. Now that the main painting was done, it was time to start gluing all of the parts back together. No baking soda on this section, just super glue and the power of pinching. I had to make sure the pieces lined up and didn't leave any gaps because a couple pieces didn't want to sit properly at first. After all of the cars were back together, I added a wash of a mixture of brown and black oil paints to all three of the cars making sure to wipe off any excess wash to let it get deep down into the cracks and crevices and make the cars look more aged and help blend the colors together. Then I made the first decision I wasn't too happy with in the moment, but in the end it didn't look too bad. I wanted to add a light blue wash to the metal parts but failed to get it thin enough, so instead of getting a coat of wash, I got a splash of wash. I was too stubborn to turn back, so they all got it. But it didn't really show up that much except for a couple places and it mostly gets covered up anyways by the end. Now we move on to the final stage of the whole process. I took some soft pastels and used a plastic bag and something hard to crush them into a powder to use as pigment powder to make the cars look like they've been driven through dirt and mud. It was just a matter of taking a thick bristled brush and using it to press the powder into the areas where I wanted the dirt to show on the cars. First covering it with a layer of yellow on the bottom to start and a layer of brown and black around the whole thing. Then I added some black to the tips of all the guns to give a smoky look like they've been used. I ended up giving them a coat of a clear matte paint and coming back and adding a second and third coat of yellow pigment and adding some orange and red as well to help boost their intensity because the matte paint dulled the color down a bit. And here are the final results. These turned out a lot better than I was expecting, to be honest. This was my first time doing a lot of things in this video, so I wasn't sure how this would turn out, but I'm happy to say I'm pleasantly surprised with the outcome. I hope you guys enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed making these. I don't plan on taking a month to put out every video, but YouTube is a hobby and I record in my free time and I haven't had much recently. But I have lots of smaller projects planned for the future that I can hopefully get out quicker, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can see when every video comes out. Thank you all for watching, my name is Corndog, and see you all in the next video.